What is going on everyone? I'm Mike, this is EAA, and that is a Cadillac XLR. So yes, this is a Cadillac XLR, and if you're watching the video, you probably already know about these cars, but in case you don't, these cars were actually made from 2004 until 2009. Um, they're basically called the Cadillac Corvette, Corvette Cadillac, however you want to say it, because they were made on the same assembly line in Bowling Green as the Corvette. Unfortunately, they didn't get the LS motors, um, and they were a little heavier than the Corvette and maybe didn't handle quite as well as a Corvette. So they weren't really a Corvette. But for the person that wanted the Cadillac, but still wanted to own a sporty car, this was definitely it. Now, this car is a 2005, just for easy reference and before I forget. And they all came with the North Star motors, which turned out to be pretty good motors once I got everything dialed in. Uh, this particular one is a 4.6 liter, 320 horsepower and it's good for zero to 60 in about the mid five second range. Um, very respectable performance. But in 2005, a Cadillac decided to up their game a little bit and they went with a 4.4 liter uh, as an option and um, a supercharger on top, they call it the XLR V, and that car made like 440 horsepower and it would pull zero to 60 in the mid four second range. Now, I made the mistake of actually driving an XLR V prior to getting this one um, because a buddy of mine had one. I was curious about the car. I'd never driven one. thought, you know, let me take it for a little spin. So he said, here, take the keys, go for a little drive or what have you. And yeah, definitely a lot more get up and go, a lot more performance than the basic XLR, but this is still very respectable. So in all honesty, I've always thought these were a cool looking car. I mean, it's because they didn't make them for a lot of years or what have you. You don't see a lot of them running around on the road, but whenever I would see one, I wouldn't notice it. And I think it's because it does have that sporty look, that low slung look, kind of that Corvette look, uh, but it's a Cadillac and I like Cadillacs. They're, they're cool cars and I'm not a convertible guy. And for those of you that don't know, this is a hard top convertible, but the way the convertible comes down and goes back up and everything like that is just so cool. I will show you guys uh, before the video is over. I will definitely demonstrate that and a couple of other features on this car. But, um, you know, I just started kind of paying attention to the cars and started looking at them. And I just decided I wanted one. It wasn't a bucket list car, but I decided that I did want one. And so once I decide I want something, I pretty much, I'm, I'm bound and determined to make it happen one way or the other. So I started looking and researching, saw a couple of them on Facebook Marketplace, uh, right around the 60,000 mile mark. And they were like asking like right around 16, 18,000 dollars for the cars, which I thought was a little high. Um, I talked to one person who was kind of on the fence about selling it, so I left him alone. So I expanded my search beyond like Craigslist, Facebook to offer up. And I happened to find this particular car and I also found an XLR V for sale. Now the XLR V had a little bit less miles than this, but it was like around the $18,000 mark is what they were asking. And I thought, I would step up to that, you know, to pick up an XLRV. So I hit the guy up, he immediately responds back. Um, he says, you know, cash only, no financing. So I assume it's a dealership. I say, not a problem. Where and when can I see the car? And then radio silence. Wait a couple of days, hit him back up, say, hey, I'm gonna buy one of these cars. If you want me to buy yours, let me know. Give me something, still radio silence. Still haven't heard anything from him. However, the seller of this one, who happens to be the son of the uh, owner, who's owned it since like 2007, um, he was very good to respond back and forth to me. We had very good communication. And he just explained to me that it was his dad's car. His dad used to drive it to work and was his, his daily driver and everything like that. And his dad just got to the point where he really couldn't drive anymore, which you know happens to the best of us. And they decided it would be better off just to sell the car and not have him driving anymore. So along comes me. Um, this car has, right at 99,000 miles. I think it just turned over 99,000 right after I got it. Um, very clean car, very nice car. A few more miles than most of them, but that didn't bother me because the price was right. Uh, I think they were asking like 11,000 for the car and I ended up getting it for nine grand. I think I did really, really well. I, I think I'd get my money back if I really wanted to, but don't think I really want to. This is a car that I can take it out and I can drive it. I could daily drive it if I wanted to. Very comfortable, very nice car, very unique car. You know, I, I always say that and 
then the car ends up going in the next video or what have you. But kind of think this one will stick around. Biggest reason is my wife really likes it. When we saw this car, she went with me and um, I made the deal. She said, I'm driving this car home. So that kind of tells me something right there. So you can see under the hood, I got the car all nice and detailed out. Very basic, 32 valve North Star, uh, 4.6 liter, very quiet sounding car. You guys are here when I started up. They don't have much of an exhaust note on them. I mean, but it's Cadillac, it's supposed to be quiet, right? Now, one way that you can tell an XLR from an XLR V would be the bulge in the hood. The V has a bulge going across there. It's pretty notable and you can see it. Um, the regular XLR does not. And normally there are some V badges on the side. I forget exactly where they are. Okay, so forgive the little bonging because I have the key in there right now, but you can see the interior is pretty clean. You can see right there that the power seat, a little thing right here, it's kind of broken. It sets up there, I need to get that fixed. Um, but you can see it is a really clean looking car. Very well kept inside. I just had it all detailed inside and out, so it looks really, really good. So for the gauge cluster, all the pertinent stuff there. Infotainment center, shifter center, console. Nice car. Now, a couple of cool features on this car other than the fact of the top, which we're getting to. Uh, this car has backup sensors, not a backup camera, but backup sensors. So for 2005, not a lot of cars had that back then. It's a little light system that tells you if you're getting too close to something, it'll start beeping at you. So that's kind of cool. Another thing that I never knew about these cars, and in my research, I never found that out until I actually drove the car and used the cruise control, but it has radar sensing and cruise control. So it will monitor the vehicles in front of you or any obstructions or what have you, and will keep you a safe distance. Uh, I think we'll take it down the freeway and I'll see if I can show you how that works. The startup. Huh? Yeah. Like I said, it's pretty quiet. It's just, it's all stock. Nothing's ever been done to the car as far as that goes. Let's turn the stereo down so we don't get any copyrights. But, um, turn that over there. So yeah, you can see nice gauges, nice setup. Typical mid 2000s GM infotainment center, but it does have a uh, nav on it and um, it's like a six CD changer. Luckily I had a few CDs from some other cars I got rid of. So I just loaded, happened to be six CDs into the changer and now I've got music wherever I go. Uh, climate control works awesome. Air blows nice and cold. It does have the dual climate control for both passenger and the driver. Let me show you guys the backup sensor and how that works. I'll put it in reverse here and try not to back into my car. So. See, it starts sensing it. And then pretty soon it'll get to red and say, stop dummy, you're gonna run into something. Uh, the car has a pretty nice little sound system for the day. I mean, it is 15 years old. And you gotta remember this car's 15 years old. So 320 horsepower, some of the stuff it has on it doesn't seem all that great for today, 2020. But back in 2005, it was pretty advanced. It also has heads up display, uh, very similar to the C5, C6 Corvettes, which is kind of cool. And um, yeah, I think it's time to take it down the road and show you how this thing drives. Okay, I'm gonna use the head mounted cam because you guys seem to really like that. And I know when I see videos, I like that too because I feel, I feel like I'm behind the wheel. I get a better perspective on the car and how it drives and how it runs. So I'm gonna start doing a little bit more of this with your guys' approval, of course. The car's got a little temperature in it, but I'll wait to step on it until we get it down the road a little bit. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see through the camera because I can't tell, but uh, heads up display is right there on the windshield. I just have it basically doing the mile per hour, which is interesting. Every vehicle that I've ever had with the heads up display, I never pay attention to it. Whenever I'm, especially when I'm getting on it or what have you, I'm always looking down at the speedometer, it seems. It does have tilt telescoping wheel, uh, dual power seats. It's pretty loaded, really. Every feature I could ever want. Automatic headlights. 
This would actually be a very nice daily driver. Okay, got the speedometer set, now watch. Hopefully it works, it doesn't make a liar out of me. Yeah, see, there it is, it's slowing down and on the heads up display, it'll say following distance and it'll, it'll show me what it's slowing down to and how it's reset and everything. Now, if I pull out here, I feel it, it just picked back up, I'm trying to go faster, but of course with this truck, it's gonna slow us down. Okay, maybe the truck's not gonna slow us down, so. It's really cool. I had no idea these cars had that. At least I don't ever remember reading about it. But um, yeah, right now it's showing me on the heads up display. If you guys can't see that it's keeping me a safe distance from the vehicles in front of me. It will accelerate up if we get that distance's gap too much. So it's really kind of cool. I, I like it. Has good brakes too. This car is really very nice to drive. It's quiet, typical of what you would expect from a Cadillac. Uh, comfortable, but still very respectable performance. Uh, I haven't taken it through like a lot of turns or in like the hills or anything like that to really tell you how it does as far as that goes. And I know it's not gonna be anywhere near what a Corvette would be, but I think it should handle pretty well. It's like a good mixture of uh, luxury, comfort, and still the sportiness and kind of like a little bit of a sports car, if you can call Cadillac a sports car. So, okay, usual spot here. I'll step into it for you guys just a little bit. Turn the air conditioning off so we get full power. It's not crazy fast, but it's definitely not one of my slower vehicles. I would say it's probably in the, it's definitely in the top 10, maybe in the top six or seven. It's, it's very respectable. And I mean, the supercharged version just goes faster. Um, it's not crazy fast, but it's still, I think, like I said, I, I wanna say like zero to 60 in the lower four second range which doesn't sound like a lot by today's standards, but hey, back in like 2006, 2007, that was moving pretty good, especially for a Cadillac. Okay, I did promise you guys I would show you how the top goes up and down, and I don't wanna forget that, so here we go. So how cool is that? I really think that that is this car's party trick, kind of what sets it apart from other vehicles. And it really is fun, you know? 
I, I kind of I think about it, I think, yeah, okay, 320 horsepower, but like when I stepped into it right off the freeway and then when I got into it coming back here for you guys, it really it's, it performs very respectably. Um, it's not going to win any races or anything like that. It's not going to be the best at anything, but it does everything well. And like I said, it could make a really good daily driver. So anybody considering buying one, I would recommend it. I don't think you can go wrong with them. I think that they are future collectible uh, vehicles and that they're coming up into their own. Just find a nice clean one. Like I said, I wasn't too concerned about finding a Concourse one with really low miles. It was perfect or what have you, because I knew I was going to drive it and I didn't want to spend a ton of money on it. I figure, like I said, I could probably get my money back. I haven't done a lot to this car. About the only thing I want to do is maybe tint the windows, but it's got new tires. I like the wheels on it. I don't want to upgrade the exhaust or intake or anything like that. Like I said, it's fine stock the way it is. It's one vehicle I'm just going to leave alone. I got plenty of other vehicles to do things to and, and dive into and spend money on. I don't need to spend money on this one. So I hope you guys like this car. Um, if you do, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. As always, all my pertinent information will be in the description below. And God bless. Take care. Have an absolutely amazing day.